This conference will now be recorded. All right, good morning or afternoon, I guess it is, everyone. It is October 14th, it is 2.05 p.m. and we are beginning our monthly meeting of the Clatsop Plains Citizen Advisory Committee. Um, Mary is not able to join us today, so we have two options. You can either choose to appoint a temporary chair for this meeting from among your committee members or staff can help assist in uh, leading the meeting today. It's completely how you would like to do it. I request that staff help us with this meeting today. Well, I don't think you need help, but, but uh, we can we can certainly take take the lead, I guess. Okay, so um, we have called ourselves to order. I guess we really have no public here, but um, just for the record, uh, I have myself, Gail Hendrickson. We have Philip Johnson, Robert Strickland, Devin Abing, Julia Decker, Planning Manager, and Diane Heinz are all here. Uh, we had a meeting summary prepared by our transcription service from April 8th of this year. Uh, were there any corrections, additions, or deletions to that meeting summary? No. No. Okay. All right. So hearing none, we will accept those as presented. So our next order of business would be public comment. Uh, Julia, you're kind of only our, our only public member today. Do you have any comment or input? I have no comment. I have no input other than I'm glad Devin is here. Um, other than that, um, I'm just joining you um, for the ride. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, so moving on, uh, our item of business today, our only item of business is to start going through the narrative section of the Clatsop Plains Community Plan. And so staff had provided a, a very rough uh, underline strike through highlight uh, rendition of this community plan. And so, uh, Obviously, any comments you have about any of the strike through underlined things, uh, we want to get today and incorporate that. But also, if we can focus on talking about what we want to include uh, in the three sections that we've got. So we're going to have basically a historic overview of the planning area. We're going to have a discussion in the plan about current conditions and what's happening right now in the Clatsop Plains planning area. And then, uh, look forward to what we see as our future conditions and start getting those identified because that narrative will help to be, or not help, but that narrative will be the foundation that we're gonna use for the policy recommendations that we've been discussing over the past several months. So um, I can answer questions. I can let you all begin talking. I don't, whatever you would like to do to uh, begin this discussion. Robert. Somewhere late in this, there is a simple Scrivener's item that I did not bother noting. And it's something as simple as the word being one, you know, and there, it, it's like a three letter word. So I'm hoping that someone will, and that's one of these highlighted little corrections. So if someone spots it, that's all it is. It's just a Scrivener's item and it's late in the game, but that's, I, that's all I saw in this entire packet. Well, Robert, since since you're off mute and you started the discussion, so and you all have a lot of history of the area, obviously. So, I mean, when we look at this and thinking about where we are now in the next 20 years moving forward, what items do we want to highlight? We don't want to highlight anything in this plan. <laughs> okay. Well. Let me see if can I can. you scroll down, Gail, and so I can re remind myself of what the. Yeah, let me pull up the editable version here. Oh, I didn't do that. Okay. So it starts out basically with an introduction, um, which is 
I thought very interestingly worded. Uh, it's, it's, it's very personable. It's very personal. Um, and I really didn't make any changes to that except to correct a spelling error. Uh, and then from there, we move on into purpose and the reason why we have a plan. Uh, again, I thought this was very well worded and, and thought out and put together. So I don't think we made recommended a lot of changes there other than to extend the timeline. Um, Moving down, as we got into the scope, um, a lot of it was just terminology cleanup, but there were sections in here as we got further down that talked about the planning process, uh, that talked about how you read the plan. And uh, as staff, I recommended taking a lot of that language out. Uh, some of it was put in, I, I would suspect, because at the time this was done, we were just at the very beginning stage of, well, maybe not the beginning stage, but Senate Bill 100 had been passed in 73. We had started a process at that in the mid to late 70s and had worked through it. But basically, this type of planning was something that was very new. And so I think they felt that at that time, it was important to explain how how it came to be and how you used it and why we had it. A lot of that now is just codified into our code. Um, if you want to keep it in, we can certainly keep it in and update it. It's not meant to take it out to um, to, to um, eliminate knowledge for people, but it just seemed a little redundant. I, I think the part that shifted the Skippin' on a Water Control District to past dance was nicely done. I believe they have dissolved now. I think it's. I believe they they certainly correct. believe they have. Yeah. yeah. So we can certainly verify that and make sure that they're officially dissolved. Um, all right. So that's all our planning process. That is something that you can't really ask them because they have dissolved as far as they were concerned. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's an odd thing where the baton was handed off to county council or somebody, but it it has dissolved. It no longer exists. They uh, they turned the money over to the county, and they really had no other assets except maybe a roll of fencing and a lock. Yeah, I think wasn't there the dam. At Cullaby Lake, and then there isn't there a dam out on the west side, and, those, uh, the Eighth Street Dam. Those are contentious matters because, as far as the district was concerned, uh, they were not owned by the district. The district owned no real estate, so the the dam out at Cullaby uh, has been on. Uh, land that whether it belongs to DSL or the county that's that's for the county council and DSL uh, DSL spirits held doesn't want it and the county doesn't either but it it sits on public land in both cases you know it, it but it does it was never real estate that was owned by the skip on water control district you know at 8th street uh, city of Warrington uh, spent about $120,000 on legal fees to try and get it, and uh, but, but that's a whole side issue. That's a, that's a waste of time. It, you know, the the district never claimed it, but uh, the lawyer that Warrington paid about $120,000 to still tried to uh, act like something was being accomplished. But it, it, so anyway, the district has never owned any real estate. The, uh, the Eighth Street Dam was sitting on riverbed that obviously belonged to Department of State lands, meaning Gail and Julia and Devin and Diane. But not you. 
and and Robert also. But uh, it, it was it was never owned by the district. It was, you know, but it was something where Warrington sought control of it. Uh, but there's no need to sue the district to, to obtain it because the district never owned it and never claimed to own it. Hi, Don. Hi, Don. Show? Hi, Don. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Robert. I'll, um, when I go through the plan again, I'll try and inc incorporate as much of that as I can in there. It, it really should be a, a dead side issue. Well, it's still important to note because that's going to have ramifications over the next 20 years. So mm -hmm. we, we need to be aware of it. Okay, so this was more of our, how do you amend a comprehensive plan? We're recommending taking all that out. Uh, so here is where I put some uh, placeholders basically so we can talk about history of the area of the planning area, our current conditions and our future conditions. I know I had set sent out to the group last week uh, this local history section. And Don, I know you sent me something which I have not had the opportunity to read yet, but I'm going to put it up on the screen here. And it's very small, so I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. Uh, apparently, though, um, there's some, uh, there was uh, one omission and a couple of errors, and I wanted to go over that before it got fleshed out. Okay. Do you want to go through your um, email, Don? Or I'll, I'm going to send yeah. this out to the group, too. Yeah, please. Yeah. All right, let me forward. I'm sure it's going to raise a couple of eyebrows. Yeah. Bear with me here. Sure. This 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 was a collaborative effort from um, uh, Councilman Devin Abing and and Chair Tony uh, Johnson and myself. All right. Go ahead, Don. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, could you scroll it down just a tad? Uh, let's see here. It a little bit more, and a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, hold it. Um, where it says um. Uh, Clatsop County residents felt they needed a military, they needed military protection. And then if you keep reading and it'll go down to um, the fortification was started in 1963, that should be 1863. Where it says a reverend male Clatsop named Cullaby. Yeah, that's got to be corrected too. Is, so that just means a a revered, correct. Good. And I'm going to wait for uh, the correction from Gail. There's and then there's uh, something that was omitted. Spell check sometimes kills me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, oh, you went over. Did you correct the 1863? Oops. Yeah. Peace. 1863. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, downwards. Oh, it says uh, Reverend. That's supposed to be revered. And uh, he was a uh, Clatsop elder. So elder should be in between uh, Clatsop and named. Yeah, there you go. Okay. He, he, he really wasn't a chief, but he was really revered. I mean, he, 
respected. From what I gather, the the head shaman was the chief there at passed from um, smallpox. Was the village that's mentioned up there in the vicinity of the Boy Scout camp? No, um, that's that's just from uh, the practice of uh, the Euro Americans building over um, village sites. For instance, like Wana. Underneath Juana, there's uh, two layers, and then the village site on the first layer. And then uh, the same for the Coast Guard station at a place called Point Adams. Adams being named for one of the sergeants of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Anyway, that point, which was a, a, a launching area for the, for the bar, so to speak, uh, that, that was the first village site and underneath it is um, near uh, Keeluk village the first one that's the one that was attacked by the Bud Hudson's Bay company they sent down a couple of divisions of people to bombard the place and um, kill all the uh, males and uh, male juveniles They didn't get all of them, but they got most of them. And that's the only corrections that I could see. I don't know, may have. Okay. So I did send that out to everyone. Um, I know you probably all haven't had a chance to read it. But uh, between now and next meeting, if uh, there's anything that stands out that we need to discuss at our next meeting in November, we can make sure that's on the agenda. Thank you, Gail. No, thank you, Don. Okay, so um, it looks like you, your history, and this has gone through the cultural committee as well? Yep. Okay. Um, so we've got the through the 1920s here, and then... Um, so is there something in addition? So Don, it looks like your history sort of tapers down a little bit after the 1920s. How, what do we want to pick up after that period and include as, as part of the history of the Clots of Plains? Because obviously a lot's happened since the 1920s as well. I'll, um, I'll get back with Culture Committee on that after this meeting. Um, okay. Thank you. And see if, the, if there's something else that we've missed. And I have a s sneaking suspicion of one of them is going to be Tansy, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, okay. One of the items obvious to me is around 1905, the Carnahan ditch was dug from Colby Lake uh, down to around Perkins Road to drop the water level ar around three feet uh, to improve the, to, to do two things. Uh, one, to transport logs from Colby downstream, but also to make this more usable as farmland because be before that, this entire area between Perkins and Colby would flood in the winter time. And, and I think you can probably find in the county assessor's office, uh, cartographer's office, old maps showing all this area in the winter time as being flooded, you know, over around Hawkins. So anyway, what I'm, what I'm saying is the big event following about 1905 was totally changing the flow of the Neocoxy, for one thing. Instead of flowing down to Wahana or Neawana, it changed the flow 
down to the Skippinon. You know, it, it basically, all of this was extremely flat. And then the whole drainage pattern changed from what had been the case in Lewis and Clark days to opposite. You know, and that would have included how the Chinook traveled from Classic Plains down to now one estuary. You know, it just it it changed the the direction uh, of Neocoxy Creek. Instead of going north and horseshoeing through uh, Fort Clap not Fort Clap, uh, Camp Rylea, and back down through Sunset, you know, through through the parade ground and down through Sunset Lake and south to Gearhart, it flowed the opposite direction. You know, flowed, drained it all toward connecting with the Skippinon River. You see, you know, so basically the Skippinon River was not down here where I am. It was simply flat land. Uh, and then they, they dug the Carnahan Ditch uh, to, to drain the area about 1905. So Robert, did that end up opening more grazing land on the yes, plains? Yes, it did. Okay. Yes. That was, that was kind of, that was one of the objects. Well, it was, and it also just weird things like when the county was wanting to uh, do some remedial work to get to score points to turn it back into duck ponds and so on. I, I'm talking about in 2014. Uh, they ran to well, gee, you can't you you can't scrape this back off and turn it into duck ponds. You know, in other words, I I don't mean to sidetrack, but the the county was promising to turn this land in front of me into big duck ponds, in, ending in 2014. Uh, and what's his name? Uh, a uh, young cartographer was involved in that. Uh, and that project, we were never told well, you weren't going to do it. You just stopped the project. Uh, 2014, seven years ago. You know, it's both current history and forgotten history. But it has to do with the business park. At one point, the county was stuck on filling wetlands at the business park. And this was meant to be an offset to the county's filling wetlands at the business park. What about what else about the history of the plains do we want to include? We know there's been a lot of farming. When did Camp Rylea come in? Oh. Philip, do you know? Say that again, Gail. I'm sorry. Oh, when did Camp Rylea uh, get get uh, built on the Classic Plains? As far as I'm aware, I'll double check. I thought it was 1927. Okay. Camp Classic or Fort Classic, excuse me. Yep. Uh, something else, obviously huge, was the uh, whatever it was, Soil Conservation Service 
during you know planting all the scotch broom is to stop the dunes from uh, moving on Classic Plain. And again, that, that goes back around the same time, uh, Colonel Johnson. Uh, you, you know, I, I have old pictures and I forget if it was early to mid thirties or, or when that was, but it, it was all the same time period. So thinking about some of these historic things that have happened, what what kind of impact did it have that is still reverberating today? One of them was was the beach enlarging to the west, or was it receding? Yeah, you know, and I guess that had to do with, with the jetty, for one thing. But for not that long ago, the landowners farthest west on uh, along the beach uh, was that accreted land was that state land that had accreted or was it more to be sold off as the beach grant? So it would depend on whether or not you owned it, but certainly there in Surf Pines, uh, there were those who successfully said, hell, this is my personal accretion. That is not public land that has accreted. So, you know, th these are just those strange details that few living persons care about now, but that was a, a big deal of was the accreting coast, uh, public land, or did the lucky beachfront landowner suddenly gain another strip of beachfront loss to sell off? You know, this is not ancient history by any means. Uh, this would have been a hot topic around the 25 years ago. You know, people whose names are on those roads, who were the developers in Surf Pines. Okay. And, and then that switch of, and, and here's, I guess, where Tom Horning comes to play. Uh, is it accreting or going away? You know, uh, do we need to keep those dunes stabilized? You know, what, what is our task in planning? Is this a, a growing beach or a disappearing beach? Okay, so for the sake of argument, if it's accreting or eroding, either way, what, how is that gonna impact our planning area over the next 20 years? What issues do you see okay. arising, depending on whether it's accreting or eroding? Places like Line and Weber Estates happen to have been built as the no-build zone fence was disappeared. You know, there, there used to be a, a long no-build zone going all the way from uh, the, the from Camp Kawan along south, uh, and Hal Snow uh, 
they were hot topics. Yeah, uh, what's his name? The county commissioner who helped the north end of Sunset Lake go to the country club, Joe Backinson, probably remembers. I think he's still alive. Probably remembers some of that story because he was certainly hoping, a, along with the fellow. Uh, Ricky Schroeder, who was wanting to do golf courses, you know, a, a world-class, whatever that category of golf course is, it's uh, done in, in Scotland, you know, wanted to do that on classic planes. They really didn't want to see that go to the federal government uh, in north of Sunset Beach Road. But it, it's not ancient history, is what I'm saying. Uh, and I've forgotten the vocabulary that, that properly describes that kind of golf course. A Lynx a Lynx course? Lynx. 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 Yeah, that's what, that's what the Sunset Golf Club, Country Club is right now. That is a Lynx course. Yeah. Um, so. yeah. <clears throat> But that's the only kind of course you can really build that close to the ocean. Yep. Is is a link because of the conditions that you know surround the that particular area. So well, it's, be, it has it, been a contentious topic from the when Bill Barons was county manager. Yeah, you know, and there was plenty of effort to. You know, by some people to build a lynx type course on what then was county land. In fact, there were, uh, I think Ricky Schroeder, he was trying to pay something like $25,000 to have the first right to build one up around Delora Beach. Hmm. You know, so so this isn't ancient history. These this is these were the dreams of people on the cusp of death. Goonies, you mean? <laughs> we're gonna build we're gonna build a golf course on on a hill. <laughs> so speaking about the dunes, so let, let's talk a bit. We've seen, well, not we, because I wasn't here, but you all have seen a lot of growth and development, especially houses. And I know in the time I've been here, the number of houses had been built, so I can imagine uh, what's happened since this plan was done. So can we talk a bit about um, what type of issues you're seeing right now because of residential development and what you think is going to happen over the next 20 years? I will throw in another tiny little blather that was you're really showing the county policy was focused on wanting upper middle income housing. There was not a desire to have housing for affordable housing. Uh, you know, and I'm talking about, I, I can't remember her name, but, but there were county planning processes. Uh, Steve Folsom, uh, you know, having to do with what, what do we do with the land down at Sunset Beach? Uh, but, but the point is, the, the focus was we want to attract upper middle income housing. There was never any interest in uh, a mixed neighborhood of all incomes, yeah, and, and again, this is not ancient history. These are people who are still alive and lurking. And then these, these were county projects, county planning projects. I think that wasn't it just to capture those people that are coming up from California, you know? That's where the money was. Yeah, because they could, you know, Obviously, the price of housing in California is 
quadruple what it is here. So, you know, they could come in and buy buy property or buy a, piece, a house for, you know, dirt cheap in their books and then turn around and you get, make it so expensive. Even developers come in and buy, buy a big chunk of land and then develop it. And basically the local residents wouldn't even have a chance to have access to it to to live or whatever because it's it would just be too much too high I mean, you see that now in astoria you know with some of these places you know it's like oh yeah we're gonna go ahead and we'll build a condominium but nobody can afford it you know this where you know you, can, you know yeah, that, where you can you know where you can you know um build build a decent sized apartment complex that's affordable and at least have, you know, be able to house local residents and, and think about the locals. I think the town has gone away from its thinking of its local people to like, oh, we wanna we wanna attract all these wealthy people from other areas to come here again and take over, you know, and it, it's sad in my opinion. There, there was a strong move from people, local landowners, not wanting to do agriculture because that was too much work and preferring to simply go into real estate. And then yeah. whether that was down around Gearhart or whether that was uh, <laughs> here on Clatsop Plain near me, uh, you know, Sunset, uh, the, the town of Sun, town side of Sunset Beach it was 1907 that it was platted. The country club came in in 1923, but all that area south of Sunset Beach Road, you know, that's all recent history. These are people who, who are friends of people in the top row of, of this meeting today uh, who hope to get the prime oceanfront dune 60 foot high lots you know for their own enjoyment this, this wasn't these, these were local people making a buck in real estate but the county had already basically decided that agriculture wasn't going to be a, a viable um, um, economic opportunity for the county so there wasn't any it wasn't it so much it, it had it was held in low esteem. It's it's been the bottom two percent economically for a long, long time. And people didn't you know, you, you had four hundred dairies here in the county in nineteen fifty. No one wanted to do that after that. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, but in as uh, the county is gonna say stop doing it, it's just Hey, it's harder work than selling it off as real estate. Yeah, without any support or encouragement or subsidy, that's true. And that was the position that the county had already established as its um, determination for this area. The things that you were asking about, Gail, the, the um, what ifs of all of this development that is clear all you have to do is drive down the road the water issue we you know there isn't unlimited water the environmental issue all the lakes from camp kwan along from long lake down to to seaside are eutrophied because the um the percolation doesn't happen effectively in this area they continue to build without yeah, we all have septic tanks. They overflow, especially in the lower areas in Clatsop Plains. They overflow just as a matter of course. You can't shower and flush your toilet on the same day and and uh, not flood into the lakes. And you know, right now I look out my window at a at a a great lily swamp. You know, with a couple of feet of water near to my dock because I keep it cleared myself. Mm -hmm. But th those are going to be dunes. environmental and water area. issues are going to be 
if this you know, so so where you used to walk out and check you know and, and, and find uh wildlife habitat uh, the yeah plants that the silver spot butterfly would eat the yeah the these little damp areas uh, I, yeah. I forgot the term it's an archaic term swale s-w-a-l-e yeah. and, then, and then it becomes hard to even find for a neocoxie creek goes from a sunset lake down to the neowana estuary of course it's still there but no one wanted it landowners didn't want it to be there they, they'd rather bulldoze you know grade the dunes and dry it out it's not just loss of silver spot butterfly habitat either. Right. If, <laughs> the if elk are in my backyard there. chewing on my my uh, blueberries and my gunnera because their habitat has been completely developed and that's and that's a big thing there too is the uh, the elk and deer you know um as as expansion grows in the area and development occurs you know they start to lose their their habitat you know their areas of grazing gets diminished and then their force is then force them to <clears throat> to move further. I mean, shit. Now, excuse me. You can now go downtown on your way out to Hammond, and elk are just walking the walking the middle of the road, just you know, because they've lost their normal grazing areas because of that development that has occurred in the backside towards uh, Fort Stevens. And that, you know, um, <clears throat> and then, sorry. There were trade-offs done, uh, of which Colonel Johnson is aware, uh, so that Camp Early didn't have to worry about the word silver silver spot, you know, so, so there'd be trade-offs that involved nature conservancy. And uh, just so it was no longer an issue that it was settled matters. You know, the the silver spot larvae didn't get to sign the agreement, but uh, at least uh, Oregon Military Department didn't have to worry about people eyeballing. Camp Arlea as a silver spot habitat, and and I've forgotten where Nature Conservancy came in, but yeah, you know, so land developers south of Sunset Beach Road didn't have to worry about the word silver spot. You know, there were a lot of agreements that I don't remember the details now, but I'm sure they're still in force. <coughs> Okay, so Philip, would you like to talk about any of this um, and offer your perspective on this? I think I can, hopefully you can see me. Okay. Um, the only thing I am familiar with, we've had some, uh, with recent, some range modifications or repairs or sustainment. Can you see me, Gail, or is that working? No, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Okay, I guess that's probably better than seeing me anyway. Um, well, there we go. So I know we I've had recent conversations with let me close this. We got helicopters. Probably a great time to have that conversation with I have Coast Guard practicing today. Um, I've talked to Jim Arnold and we've had some conversations about in the silver spot butterfly um, and all habitats here that are on Camp Riley. And part of that is what we've been talking about is the overall management. Uh, so one thing that we do here that I can speak to when it comes to any habitat is that we do coordinate. If we're gonna dig, if we're gonna make any changes, even if I wanna you know, remove a tree because it's now a hazard, that's coordinated with environmental. So I can say that we just don't go out and start 
digging holes and making ranges and doing things without a coordination with our environmental folks. Uh, and to be even more specific, if we are going to do any type of dig digging, if it's over 18 inches, we have to have somebody there from the environmental department that is qualified uh, to make sure that if there anything is found, that we stop, it's cordoned off, you know, and, and we take the right procedures. So um, I hope that helps a little bit. I can't speak, I can't go into detail as, as, as uh, Mr. Strickland goes into, but I can, I can speak to what I have to do as the site manager here to ensure that we are, um, you know, that we are maintaining habitat. And we, so at one time, I believe long before I came on the scene in the 1990s, uh, I came here once and there were some areas near our repel tower that were, you had no access. But it's my understanding now that the, um, that the butterfly, the silver spot butterfly, that's no longer an issue here on Camp Riley. I can't speak for all of Clatsop County and to the team that probably knows more detail than I do. So I think I great. hope that helps a little bit. I think it's great, Colonel Johnson, that you exist as part of this process. You know, as yes, you know, because you are the responsible authority, and it's great to have you here rather than just talking into space. You know, there there are funny little things like uh, over near the officers club, the repairing areas along the the water there, where obviously for a long time. There was no effort to maintain repairing vegetation. Uh, not a hot topic. No. You know, and just like the ducks and geese know where Neocoxie Road is. But it's always been a little strange. No, we still really need parade grounds because we're still kind of caught in 18, 12 maneuvers. You know, but but the, the ducks and the geese. Obviously, there's a lot that you have the power to enhance, and I'm not, I am not ragging on you. I, I think it's great, yes, that you're but there's there's a lot that can be done to enhance the environment. And and what are things? I'm not ragging on you. I'm I'm grateful you're here. Oh, no. no, it's great to share some of this, sir, because even now we are actually we just finished a. Um, an environment environmental study that that ensures that all the wetlands are met when i say managed that they're not reduced they are they continue as they are we are actually beginning we've actually located an area on that's north of me near the north the in, north of uh, where i'm sitting now at the headquarters on the north end of camp which is identified as training area eight where we're going to begin planting trees so i i can't i cannot say you know it is it is very, um, it is very clear to me as the site manager that anything I do involves environmental. Any, you know, how we manage spills if there are any here. Uh, we we just had a, we just passed our environmental inspection from an outside agency uh, from within Washington D.C. I don't know if that gives anybody a level, level of comfort or not, but we passed every, <laughs> we have passed everything here. Uh, so. I, I just want to make sure that all of all of the uh, all of the uh, the members of this board uh, and the community we don't take this lightly, and I, I never have taken it lightly. I'm a big fan of the elk. I'm not a big fan of the elk when they. I know we're part of that elk consortium, and that's been ongoing. But big fan until they show up and they leave all their business in my front yard. But it's still nice <laughs> to see. You're, uh, you know, Can I you ask you? Out there, you know how close you are. To being glowing dunes, you know the, the Scotch pines burn easily. There isn't any real soil buildup mm -hmm. out there. You know there there are these things where I'm on your side. There's this ancient history of areas called Devil's Bowl. You know that was that was all blowing dunes out there, and and not a great deal has changed from those days. And no one wants to see. Your fine forest turned into blowing dunes again. No, sir. Hey, Diane. Oh, I wanted to ask Colonel um, Johnson how the um, how his management area plans to 
mitigate the noise pollution from Camp Rylea, which is becoming, uh, it's untenable for the, those of us who live here. And it's also becoming recognized um, nationally as not Camp Rylea's, but noise pollution in general as a contributor to every kind of illness, mental illness, physical illness, heart disease, on and on. So um, I'm just wondering if Camp Rylea has a plan to mitigate the pollution that they're now perpetrating on the local area. He's going to fix it, Diane. Well, I don't know if okay. I can. So, ma'am, <laughs> ma I know that we, we've discussed this. I think uh, it's been a while since this topic's come up. But I, what I will do is I will, there is actually a noise study that has been done at Camp Riley. I will reach, and that is done by environmental. I will reach out to, uh, to Mr. Jim Arnold and I will get those, if I can get that to Gail. It has been addressed, ma'am. I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure how close you, you know, I'm not sure how close you are to Camp Riley, but what I do owe the group is I know the noise study has been done. Uh, I can't speak to it because I am not an expert on what those results were, but I will reach out. I'm actually writing this one down because this is the second time it's come up. So it is a concern and I will, um, the next time we meet, I think I owe, not I think, I owe at least what this study is and what they are looking at and how they approach it and what lens they're looking through when they're actually doing a noise study and where they're at. So does the noise study include recommendations for mitigating the noise? I, You know, you can study it till the cows come home and I'm mm -hmm. still living in a war zone without without a plan to mitigate the harm that you're causing it's a study is just another waste of my taxpayer dollars that should be going to school lunches well ma'am i've been not and i'm not being facetious but i've been in a war zone this is not a war zone but i, I am in my house it's a war zone my, yes, my pets are yours. hiding under the okay. the yeah, bed I, the, the elk are in my backyard on the days that you're doing range training because they do not know where to go to be safe it's a it's I, a problem Ma'am, I am you're aware not addressing of my, and haven't been addressing. So, ma'am, I am aware of that. I am aware that my dogs go to do the same thing. They, I, I do understand that. My dogs don't. So, yes. So, I am aware. When you say addressing it to mitigate it, I'm not an expert on what the plan, what the results were, and based on the results, it's my understanding that's what actions will be taken. So, I will get with Mr. Jim Arnold. I will let him know that this has come up and we need to at least, at a minimum, we need to share the plan. What were the results of the plan? When was it done? I don't even know if it goes into the type of the weapon systems that were firing that day when a, when a noise study was done. Is it done during a live range? Is it done during routine business? Ma'am, I'll get you I'll get you an answer. I, I can't speak well, to that. It would be very useful if it wasn't do, done during a live range training. No, <laughs> I, but I'm saying that's why I can't, you're, yeah, that's a great point. I can't, I wasn't here when it was done. I don't even know when it was last done, but I owe you an answer. Don't don't put your hopes up too high. Colonel yeah, Biden. it's not an answer, no, it's a solution. I know. When the joint land use study was done, there clearly it was so badly done in the first place that they, oh. with embarrassment, came through and did it all over again. Uh, yeah, because they would take a matrix of what was supposed to be the case and pretend they'd studied, but then you'd ask them, gee, when, you know, can, can we have some, some details on this? And obviously it never had been done. It was just, it was a, it was bullshit that was being sold by a Colorado contractor. Okay. So, so I, 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 I'm telling you, you know, keep our fingers crossed. But don't be surprised if if there was some some falsehoods disseminated that that this was carefully studied because obviously it wasn't. It was just you know, that that first joint land use study. As, as you come close to that, kind of back off and say, "Gee, let's maybe take a fresh look sometime." No, and I, sir, I appreciate that. And ma'am, Miss um, Hines, I will, I will, because I I actually live on Camp Rylea, so I. I'm probably the closest one here to hearing things, and I can hear them. Uh, I can hear them very well uh, where my house sits on Camp Riley. But I will get with Mr. Jim Arnold, and I will get with Gail on how do we disseminate this to say, look, here's where we're at. 
um, is, and I will talk to Jim about, I don't even know the frequency in which they're done. Um, I, I really can't, but I, I owe, I need to get smart on this because right now, um, I don't even have a passing grade to be honest with you. So I need to get, I need to go to school on this one. But I really do appreciate this input because if it is a concern and it appears that it is, so I will, I will, I will engage with my, with the folks I know in Salem. Gail. Yeah. Yes. And thank you, Philip, for getting us that information. So. Anytime, Gail. Anytime. Um. Somebody said my name. Yes, Don. Don, go ahead. Uh, this is for uh, Colonel Johnson. Uh, you listed, sir, um, uh, tree planting. Uh, can I ask for, on behalf of Chinook, class of Chinook, uh, what, what species are you planting or planning to plant? Sir, that's a great question. Right now, they when they start talking, when they, environmental, have talked about a tree planting, how they want to manage it, I, that, I can get you that answer. I don't know what type of tree they plan to put in the ground. Uh, to to help with the habitat or assist with it or manage it whatever whatever uh, term fits best in this scenario but that's again that's in Jim Arnold he's a heavy as you can see I keep mentioning his name I have to talk to him about this and I will get with him with a noise study and exactly what type of trees have they considered and I can get that to the committee uh, that'd be great yeah we have yes, we have five uh, very distinct species uh, that are indigenous to the area that um, need to be um, repatriated. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then my other, my, my other question is on that uh, Slusher Lake area, has there been any development there or any ground disturbance that uh, you are aware of? I've been here since March, I've been here since March of 20. Uh, March 9th to be specific we've done there's no ground disturbance that I'm aware of we're not there's no projects uh, let me think no the mount site's not near there we haven't done any projects in the mount site that's the closest facility the ammo site is in proximity to that uh, near slusher lake the only thing that we have done near it as with the approval environmental was we just put some more gravel on one of the one of the roads that are near it headed out to the beach access point short of the dunes that's it sir okay uh, that beach access is is uh military access correct well sir it's when i it's it's for guests if the ranges are not in use the guests can use it who are staying here in camp rilea uh the units can access that point uh, but that's as far as it goes it's not open to the public sir uh, uh, you can call me Don. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, Don. I'm like you. I, I make have to do a living. Um, <laughs> uh, the question about Slusher Lake is, it's a. Um, it was it. The, our ancestors used it has it was uh, potable water, on the north to south or south to north trail, between uh, the village site at Point Adams and the village sites that were in uh, Gearheart Seaside. Sir, I'm not trying to be dis. I'm going to start working on my, I'm going to lose you on my iPad because my iPad's going to die. I'm going to log on to my computer here so I don't, I don't drop the net before we finish the dialogue here, sir. But I am listening. It may appear that I'm doing something, but I'm trying to maintain my connectivity with this meeting. The, the, uh, the, the main concern is um, inadvertent discovery uh, because that was utilized by our people that lake uh, particular lake yes sir no there's been no i uh i've been out there and paddled with my kayak there's we're not we're not building and there's no plans to build anything out there as you know right around slusher lake is the um i'm having a uh, the the estuaries or the um wetlands i now i finally get the wetlands are surrounding that there's we have no intentions of building anything out there Okay. Well, the uh, if there was any inadvertent discovery of oh, you know, yes sir, tools, things of that nature, um, we would hope that uh, Camp Rileo would contact the Chinook Indian Nation. Sir, the first thing that happens if we find anything, my protocol is to contact. I, I can't remember the gentleman's name. Uh, that he is. Uh, 
for any type of artifacts that are found here, and especially the ones that you're mentioning, it's an instant stop and we contact uh, environmental. I cannot recall the gentleman's name right now, but we have a protocol that we follow before anything happens. And if we're out and we somebody happens to stumble with some, uh, upon something, we would hope that if there was a guest that was walking around that happened to find something, that before any ground disturbance, that they would that if they would be at least they would notify somebody of that find. Well, we One appreciate that, but it'd be nice. In that Sheffer Lake area is that it was privately protected by wealthy local duck hunters. You know, you know, prior to it being handed over to Camp Raleigh, uh, I'm going to try and pull up names, but you know, like like the Lowell family, uh, they were. It was just the favored duck hunting area that was not. So I'm saying that there wasn't the usual public access to it. It was protected, so there there may be more hope that, uh, for indigenous relics still being there that were of no interest to the duck hunters and, and, and weren't accessible to the general public. So just you you may have more of a treasure there, right. period. Don, I would always welcome uh, you to come out. I could take you out there and you could take a look at it. Um, you could actually, I would actually take you out if you're interested. Um, I can coordinate with environmental. I mean, I could show you the area about the tree planting. No, that's not an issue at all. Uh, I. I think if you'd like to see that, you could see it. If you haven't been here in a while, it would kind of give you an idea of what area we're looking at with respect to the tree planting. Uh, and also just you could take a look at Slusher Lake and just see what's around it if you had the time, sir. You know, that, that uh, I would uh, I would take that opportunity. I would like to make contact with you on that on behalf of Clots of Chinook, Chinook Indian Nation, uh, just uh, to Refresh my youth when I, I was uh, walking the uh, four dunes uh, on on the on part of the trail that goes north and south, south and north there between the village sites. Um, yeah, I would uh, I would like to 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 be uh, adverse. I mean, know more what's going on there, then I could report back to cultural the progress that's being uh, done with the tree planting and. Uh, protection of anything <clears throat> from inadvertent discoveries. Uh, yeah, we've only, yeah, we just started staffing the tree planting, Don, so nothing has been, the study was done. Um, environmental is, we, we've had a, a few meetings on that, but to be clear, there's, nobody's moved out on planting anything yet. Well, we, uh, the Chinook Nation encourages tree planting. Okay. Heavily yeah, tree planting. Be more than happy to, uh, to take you around and, and take a look and you know come if you've been here before um hopefully the the locations we're go, we're going to visit haven't changed much yeah i um, um we had a small chinook work party that walked that area around the lake there and um that was many years ago and uh, we were impressed that it was still in good shape but that was many years ago, so I, I have no idea what what's going on there now. I just uh, uh, was amazed that um, the water before development there was one of the finest drinking waters for the for the people that were in those village sites, north and south. Um, anyway. Uh, it's good. You're taking care of the lake. Yes, sir. Just let me know. Hopefully, you can see me on my. I'm switching devices here. Uh, uh, yep. Go, go, go. Okay. No, sir. I was able to. <laughs> Okay, while we wait for... Any other big picture concepts of what has changed 
on Classic Plains in the past few years. Move that right. back. All right. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that, Robert, please? Yeah. Uh, any other simple, big picture thoughts on what has changed on Classic Plains in the past century? You know, they're, they're, uh, the the Grange Hall down here was at the, the Pacific Grange was 1913. You know, there is so much that is fairly recent. You know, and it yes, it was agriculture, but it so mostly what has happened is just the residential development. Uh, that was mostly west of 101. You know, not, there hasn't been a vast change east of 101. You know, th there was the, uh, the fiasco of Shoreline Estates at Cullaby, you know, that Willis Buecher developed it down in a swamp. But generally, East of 101 has not been suitable for building anything. So it's been naturally protected. You know, there there are there are marshes where there used to be blueberries grown. You know, they're around Anderson Road, the Anderson family. Uh, but still, you can go through there. And not a lot has changed. You know, there's a racetrack uh, that's still in county hands. Uh, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's part of the Colby Lake Park. Uh, it, but there actually was a race car track. You know, there's still there in the horse track. But it's there's just we have an amazingly undisturbed area except where subdivisions went in. And that's basically because we have we have mucky land. I'm not sure I know what that means, Robert. Uh, Brawl your mucky peat. That mucky, is, uh, I thought we, you said lucky. Okay. No, no, okay. no, no, no but we, we we're lucky to have mucky land. Okay. All right. So hmm. we've got um, about 47 minutes left, and I want to focus a little bit of our time on what issues and challenges we're seeing moving ahead over the next 20 years in terms of our land use issues. So I know we've talked a, a lot about what's happening now. Um, we know we've got concerns with the water quality and environmental quality. But what what if you all were to look in your crystal balls, what are you all seeing happening over the next 20 years? Traffic on 101 being hellish and no one wanting to say uh, what is enough? You know, like, like like when we were trying to decide, and, and this goes back to Colonel Johnson uh, graciously. Uh, anytime we were trying to figure out a transportation plan of how to move all that east of 101 traffic, uh, Camp Arlea really did not want it to come out at a stoplight at Patriot Way and 101. You know, so we wind up where we still have extremely hazardous here at Sunset Beach and 101. And I don't see that fixing itself. Be it 20 years or 30 years, you know, it'll be, and it's not a concern to ODOT, the focus is still on the Willamette Valley, and that ours is kind of a self-regulating issue. That, uh, 
you know, you get you get to the point where someone gets crazy enough to pull out at Sunset Beach onto 101, and you wonder where is their brain? But it, it's really a dangerous highway, and it it, it you know it's not a priority of the state. Hi, this is Julia, and I'm just going to chime in real fast here um, and remind everybody that the Clatsop Plains actually extends um, all the way down to the Cannon Beach Junction. And um, so we're focusing a lot on the north end, at, which is great. Um, I was also going to mention the aquifer probably still needs to be part of everybody's discussion. But the, the Classic Plains actually extends on the east side of um, Highway 101, past Seaside, past Gearhart, and all the way down to the junction. So um, I don't know if there are anything in that area that anybody wants to discuss or look at, or if that comes into the transportation issues or anything like that. But um, anyway, I'm just throwing it out there to you. Thank you, Julia. It's kind of different geologically down south. You know, you you get that cobble that is evident at, at the cove and seaside, and that is so different from the 128 foot deep sands that are under me right here. You know, so. Uh, as to how we think of Clatsop Plains geologically uh, is, is, is worth ongoing consideration. Uh, to me, obviously, it to the east, it begins at the bottom of Clatsop Ridge. But, but from north to south, it's more curious what what planes are. You know, there's a vast areas that no one has ever walked because they're marshlands. You know, the Mackey family properties east of any development. You know, it, it, it's, it's curious land. And again, I'm no first C, till the first C. Yay. That whole area between Cullaby Lake and Neowana Estuary, I don't know if there's one foot elevation difference. You know, it's, it's often been very hard to see it where the continental divide is. You know, what point does water flow north from Cullaby Creek? And at what point does it flow south to Seaside? It's... Hmm. You know, and, and down there on McCormick Gardens Road, uh, that is such a marvelously swampy area. You know, I remember looking at a house one time out there, and there was only one little tiny area around the house that had dry land. Everything else, you know, it was water in the winter that would come. I would almost drown it all. Okay, Diane, I see you've come off mute. Did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, thanks. 
Gail, it was so long ago, I can't remember what it was. Uh, uh, we could just move on, except that the, for the future conditions, I think we should um, also concentrate on what Robert brought up initially, affordable housing, which is, I think, critical to the survival of this. And um, and then the environmental issues um, involved in development, which for some reason the county doesn't seem to enforce the existing environmental conditions. So, you know, I don't know if you can build in some kind of um, um, mo uh, mo monitoring and enforcement of the, if you manage to get the environmental st stipulations, I don't know if you can build in monitoring and enforcement because what we have now is um, should be sufficient but it isn't because it isn't enforced all right so diane can you give an example of what the county's not enforcing yeah i'll give you an example the people who bought the property next this is very personal so you know I'm just because that's what i know but it isn't um, limited to this example but the people who bought the property next to me um, built a what looked like a California McMansion. They mowed down every standing tree and blade of grass, in, or, and they have an acre. Uh, I think it's an acre and a quarter, and they they just flattened it and uh, put put in um, uh, like a like a golf course kind of grass with fountains and you know just and um, all of that. And they cut. Oh, I know. They cut all the branches off the trees along the lake because it, in the branches of the trees inter, interfered with their view. And so, um, and so they, you know, they made multiple environmental non-permitted um, violations and they just did it and there wasn't, there were no consequences to them. It, the, the beach and dune overlay zone here required no, um, removal of vegetation further out than 20 feet of the, of the um, residential structure. And <laughs> they went from, you know, probably 50 feet down to the lake, to the water's edge. And then they cut, they cut down half the trees and they unbranched the other half of the trees. And I called many times the County um, Planning Commission to complain about uh, the county commission to complain about mm -hmm. the multiple violations and it was you know well it's already done big deal nothing we can do about it so that that's the kind of um monitoring and uh lack of excuse me lack of monitoring and lack of um, enforcement of the counties of of the existing environmental protections and then the, and then the in, the existing aren't sufficient, obviously, or we wouldn't have eutrophication of the waterways from from the Pacific Ocean to seaside, from the lake to the sea, to uh, seaside. The uh, dunes lakes, the parallel dunes lakes, are all filled in now with um, plant growth, and that's a result of um, of septic overflow, which also hasn't wasn't monitored initially when the buildings went in, when the development went in, and then hasn't been mitigated since then. So I'm just full of complaints today, but <laughs> uh, okay. All right, Julia, I see you're off mute. Did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, um, I was going to uh, just mention uh, the cranberry bog. That are on the plains, and if anybody wants to, you know, consider those, I see um, we're talking about the filling in of the coastal lakes, and we're talking about environmental protections. And I just wanted to make a plug for um, the agriculture that we um, still enjoy, especially those cranberry bogs, which are unique. Um, so, and and I just wanted to comment. Maybe it doesn't matter, but I just am very intrigued by the fact that the class of plains includes. Um, part of the headland on the south end of Seaside, um, which is Tillamook Head. I just, I, I just really find that intriguing. I don't know how that ended up being that way, um, and and it 
not, doesn't have to be a conversation for today. I'm just curious, and maybe somebody remembers, Robert. Um, <laughs> how, how did we end up with that landscape unit? It intrigues me, that's all. But I did want to put in a plug for the cranberry bogs. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Devin, did you have something that you would like to add uh, to our future conditions or things to think about maybe under uh, current conditions or anything? Or Don? Yeah, I do. Um, traffic. <laughs> yeah. Highway 26 into Highway 101 heading north, uh, you know, and south. Um, as I see in the, you know, my forward thinking in 20 years, I, I really, without any kind of lane improvements or widening of the Highway 26 or alternate wraparound through Seaside um, and that, I just see a congestion nightmare that will plague us 20 years down the road. Um, especially like during summertime, as more people, as Seaside develops more, as the area around in the class of plains areas develops more, as, you know, well, Astoria can't really develop anymore. But I just see that the congestion is going to be just unreal and it's already unreal right now i mean you know you could sit on highway 26 getting to 101 junction for an hour to move 18 feet and then in the winter time it floods and that still hasn't been corrected but we're going to fix we're going to just repave it maybe raise up the edge just a little bit but that doesn't solve the flooding. And then all of a sudden you get a high, high amount of rain. Boom. Flood going outside, you know, outside of Seaside. I just, those things that are known issues really should, they need to be a priority um, moving forward, I think, you know, because it's just, it's just, it's just a headache. And then you, you know, when you sit in that traffic or when you have to, and there's no way around, there's no way to get around to avoid, you know, then you get unhappy people. And then <clears throat> those that work in the fuel stations and stuff like that have to face the brunt of angry people who have been sitting in traffic for over an hour just to go, you know, from one end of town to the other end of town or, you know, whatever, you know. And so that for me is, is you know, that's a huge issue that hopefully it will get addressed at some point. I'll go ahead and expound on that, uh, on what Devin was saying. The, the, that flooding would be between the Relief Pitcher Tavern or whatever that amusement park is next to it, all the way to Benneke Creek. And uh, uh, every, it, it sounds like, a, I mean, it looks like a frequent, repair job and dumping money on top of uh, money that's been washed away it just doesn't make sense. Um, there was discussion about making it an elevated road, uh, somewhat like a, uh, a, low, a, a low head bridge from one end to the other uh, in that Benneke Creek to uh, the, the relief pitcher area. Uh, there's some examples of that over there on in Pacific County, where they were uh, low fields, where they put a bridge over a, an area. Um, I think it's a nacelle. Anyway, it's, I there's got to be a that should be addressed before somebody gets killed again. Just just for the discomfort of Devon. Uh, I have, for a 50-year period from 1969 on, was involved with the uh, Stakeholder Advisory Committee mm -hmm. for the Camp Riley to Delmore Loop section of, of 101. 
in literally over 50 years. Uh, so hold your breath, Devin. Oh, I, I doubt anything's going to happen, but, you know, obviously it, we're, it, we're, it we're not. It, exactly yeah, I mean, we're looking, we're, it's, this is mostly hypo, it's like hypothetical thinking and wishing uh, for something to happen tw within the 20 year period. I mean, I know obviously that would take an act of Congress to reroute or to do anything with the traffic, but obviously that. I don't. I wouldn't see it happening in 20 years, but you, you, you know, basically can't. It is an issue. Start widening 101 up here, where it's a hundred-year-old road. You know, two lanes on top of the dune, because any tiny thing you do, you have a been a massive environmental yeah issue that 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 far out outstrips the budget. You 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 can't even have runoff from the asphalt highway into the adjacent wetlands without that being a key issue. So it's just not going to happen. You know, we're not a priority. So, no. so I, I guess we just have to learn to accept that it's going to be scary as hell to pull out on the highway as someone frustrated decides it's their turn to leap in, into the traffic mix. But it is not going to be an orderly process. It's, it, it's gone for 50 years with people talking about a bypass. You know, there at one point they were wanting eight lanes of pavement right where <laughs> I'm sitting here at Sunset Beach in 101. Uh, and, and that was how the drawings were drawn up. You know, a 20 mm. acre interchange here at Sunset yeah, Beach. I, yeah, I, I think I've heard, I've heard about that. And that was a long time ago. <clears throat> and when I'm no longer on this committee, I'm still happy to blather about the ancient history of ODOT 50 years of planning improvements along this strip of highway. Yeah. Okay, Don, do you have anything that you you want to add to our list? Um, no, I think we already spoke about the uh, our concerns about uh, the elk curds. Um, <laughs> Be nice to have the salmon runs, the chum and the coho salmon runs in the skipping on again. Skipper knee one. Just because I never hear them mentioned, uh, I don't know if anyone has ever seen anything cuter than a baby skunk. Uh, you know, they're they're little talked about in about wildlife on Clatsop Plains. But I, I, I suggest that there is nothing more darling than a baby skunk from Clatsop Plains. All right, Philip, how about you? Do you want to uh, add anything to our future conditions list? No, I think uh, I do. I do agree with that traffic, and that's that's uh, as Robert mentioned. That's going to be a um, a lifelong pursuit. If you're not a priority, then you really have to wait your turn. No, what I've got for me is uh, reaching out uh, that I can that I can assist with from the chair I sit in anyway with the environmental reaching out to environmental uh, with the NOAA study. Uh, Don, look forward to hosting you out here. Um, I'd like to get some little bit of advance notice. I could have somebody down from environmental that can speak more to, I can do operations all day long. Uh, but I, we've got some great talented folks in environmental and I know they'd be happy to participate in that. Um, so outside of that, um, no Gail, but thank you for the opportunity to provide input on this document. 
Okay, thank you. All right, so let's move, move off of this topic for just a moment. Um, at, with the corrections or deletions or additions or anything else that's in here uh, right now in this very first draft, do we have any other items that we want to pull out for discussion at this point? There is an expression that I haven't noticed this time around about maintaining the semi-rural character of the area. It's in there. I, I mean, actually... I'm not trying to slow down and saying, uh, so the other half of semi-rural is semi-unrural, and kind of what are we hoping to have? Is it like half a city? What What's the vision? You know, uh, again, I haven't seen the, the expression semi-rural in, in this iteration. It is, in, it is in here, Robert. Um, good, good job. So, and I purposely highlighted it because I remember that we did have this discussion several months ago that you started that we never had any closure to. So uh, that was the reason I highlighted it. So um, I'll let you all discuss that. I mean, do we think, do you think the class of planes is still semi-rural? Do we want to try to define it? Do we just want to say it's not that anymore and pick a new term? I guess I would like to hear, you know, like, like it'd be nice to say, gee, what population is too many? It, it, it's never talked about. So how urbanized have we lost our sense of going through the beautiful country? So the bucolic class of planes. Uh, can do we get to stay bucolic? Sure, it's a good replacement for semi-rural. Yeah, I don't think that semi-rural rural is uh, any more applicable considering the development that is going on there by Robert there uh, the dunes yeah. subdivision I agree completely on the, on the plains I mean they've got roads going everywhere even all the way out to the four dunes which I don't think is is legal but anyway um, yeah there's there's gonna be um, hmm. One acre houses there all over the place. And I mean, you may not be able to see it from Highway 26, but uh, it'll be there. They'll greet you with the traffic. A pity those that had to make a exiting that area and have to make a uh, left hand turn to try and get into Seaside Warrington, or I mean, uh, Warrington, Astoria. Very dangerous. So if you're not semi-rural, what, how, how do you see yourselves? Spurging or spurg? Splur, slurb, slurbing? Yeah. I know. Say hi. I know. Don't, don't do that. Arcadian. <laughs> Say that again, Diane. Huh? Oh, I said Arcadian. Oh. It means semi-rural. Oh. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Does it? No. Julia, it means, it means uh, country life. It means um, non-urban. Rural, rustic, or pastoral. 
especially suggesting simple, innocent contentment. I, I think maybe if we use more psilocybin, <laughs> we may find an acceptable solution. Can't we just take out semi-rural and then define it the way you've defined it on the next line down? Don't say semi-rural, but describe it as open spaces and blah, blah, blah. You have to get down to it. You have to scroll down a little. You hurt my leg. <clears throat> There you go, keep going. Maintaining the character of clots of plains to preserve the large amounts. And it just take semi-rural out. Is everybody in agreement with that? The, yeah. the formerly bucolic character. Or just leaving the maintaining the character of the planes to preserve the large amounts of open space. Mm -hmm. Without defining the character any more than the preservation of large amounts of open space. So kill semi rural and just maintaining the character of the class of planes. Yeah, just kick semi rural out of that sentence. Right. But then what is what is your character? And if you're losing your semi-rural, do you still have large amounts of open space? I mean, well, that's the that's the point. That's the the point. character is large amounts of open space, okay. which isn't necessarily even as Don just pointed out true. <laughs> Those large amounts are shrinking uh, rapidly. What other thoughts do we have here? We've got about 18 minutes left. Uh, do we dare, instead of saying semi-rural, maintaining the rural character of the class of planes? Yeah, that would be more... Um, Aspirational. Or, that would be more aspirational, right? That would be more aspirational. That's what we would like to maintain is the rural character of the plains. Okay. Any other thoughts about that one? Anybody That's opposed? Any other items that we'd like to touch on today? We've still got two, we still have two more meetings yet. So uh, this isn't the only time that we'll be reviewing it in case we think of something later. So um, Gail, are we looking at the whole plan now? Yeah, and okay. I believe, did I put in the policies? I think I updated the policies as well. Maybe I didn't. I think I did. Um, and I did highlight the new ones that we had talked about. Uh, there were some, especially with the uh, agricultural policies, where we created a lot of new ones because there really were none. It just said see goal three, and there were, there were no policies in goal three. So we crafted some of those. So maybe for our next review in November, and that's one thing we do need to talk about. Um, for November, we will need to reschedule our meeting because it is uh, November 11th, uh, Armistice Day or Veterans Day, depending on your generation. And uh, so we need to reschedule that meeting. So uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Does anybody have any preferred dates or times? Well, the day before would be okay with me, 10th, the 10th. Oh, okay. What's your calendar like, though? Um, I think the 10th, you want to keep it at 2 o'clock? 
Yeah. Yeah, November 10th at 2 o'clock, I could do that. Yep. How does that work for everyone else? Be okay with me. Should be fine. Okay. No issues here, Gail. Okay, sounds good. So we'll plan on the 10th at 2 p.m. Okay. Hey, Gail. Yeah. Can I ask, I, I know this isn't our topic on, on the class of plans, but I really need to uh, connect with the next Walewski, uh Lewis and Clark meeting date and time. Okay, Julia, can you get that information out for Don? Because he wasn't able to attend our last meeting when you were out as well. I will and, send that to you in just a few minutes, Don. And okay. um, the uh, the agenda is not ready yet. It hasn't gone out yet. But I'm going to go ahead and send you the date and time so that you can get it onto your schedule immediately, okay? Okay, I just want, uh, Julia? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to, um, not forewarn you, but just let you know, that um, I, I, the reason I'm earn, earnestly wanting to get on this is that there was a statement written about um, uh, a question that uh, 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 Chinook, um, well, wanting to know why Chinook is opposed to low head hydro projects in Clatsop land. So um, I'm prepared to address that issue. Uh, apparently, it is not an issue with the other planning areas just Walewski, Lewis and Clark apparently. Okay, very good. Thank In you. Case I am terminated with prejudice. Uh, I will hope to see you as a member of the public in November. What? In case I am terminated. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. On October 27th, I will still attempt to be here as a as a civic doing my civic public responsibility <laughs> god bless you for that thank you we will welcome you back so all right if there is nothing else immediately pressing for today's meeting um we can go ahead and adjourn We'll be sending out the next agenda, which will have a, a incorporating our comments from today and a more cleaned up, polished draft uh, to look at in November. And we'll do another look through it then. And in the meantime, if anybody has any questions or uh, comments, and Philip will get some information from you, and I'll disperse that to the group as well. Um, if there's nothing else for the good of the order, I declare us adjourned. Can I, can yeah. I ask? A uh, question, Gail. Um, would it be possible, instead of going back six months um, in transcriptions, to transcribe the most current meetings? I don't find the the um, I don't find it useful to review um, meeting notes from six months ago. I don't remember what it would be. To me, it would be a lot more useful in our current. Um, a, you know, process to have what happened at the last meeting and not what happened six months ago. And I know there's a backlog, but it just doesn't make sense to me to go. Uh, I don't care what happened in May. I just care what happened this month. Okay, I can see Diane if they can do that. I can't make any guarantees. Okay. And, um, right now, staff just doesn't have the time to take on the meeting summaries, so that's. The reason we yeah, I, I get that totally, but I don't. I don't see. To me, it's not useful to go back so far, when we're really coming right up to the end, it, and we're what we're dealing with is continuous from month to month right now. So it would be more useful in our next meeting to have this meeting's summary than to have May's summary. Okay, I, um, I will reach out to them, but I can't make any guarantees okay. on that. Okay, all right, just a suggestion. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye.